Good morning. I'm Phil Green. I'm here with um, Ginny Coker, um, artist renowned for the future, we hope, um, with this art um, podcast this morning. Um, so it's just a very relaxed thing, Ginny. We can just, just talk and chat. The um, One of the things that I've known you for... Actually, I can't remember how many years we, I've, we've known we each other. We won't go there, yes, Phil. it's probably best not to. Yeah. But... Um, Literally, I'm in sort of awe of your talents in some respects because I think I'm talented, but you are, but you, you are, Phil, put me to shame. extremely. But um, but anyway, the mm. thing is, um, in all the years I've known you, I've actually not known where you were born. Uh well, I was born in Gore in Southland. Oh, Gore, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Shall I give you the year and then that can no, skirt, skirt no, that's around fine. the age? No, we thing. won't worry about the years. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in Gore, and then um. Oh, fellow uh, South South Islander, I like that. Definitely mainlander. Yes, mainlander. Yes. Yes, However, yes. I chose to come and live in Tauranga, and I love it. Tauranga yeah. has been so wonderful to me. Mm. And thank you for those comments. Yeah. Um, we don't see always see ourselves as others see us, and we think, oh, well, you're just expanding our repertoire or building on our the things that we love to do. Mm. And while we aspire to, and I certainly do, I aspire to certain. And, uh, modern artists and to have the skills and qualities um, that make some of the early uh, 16th and 17th century artists so influential on us today. I aspire to those things. Mm. But we, um, or me personally, I think I'm so busy planning and trying to excel in the things that I love to do that I often don't think of the, the variety or depth of other people's perception. But this week, this or this past month, a lot of lovely people I've come across, including yourself, Phil. As oh. you say, we've known each other and I've admired your work over the years. Mm. You're, you're under the radar, I must say, in your design and... Um, your design and put into this town and perhaps further afield that I don't know about. Mm. So we don't we don't always know the whole cross section of our of our skill, our impacts. No, and I people. think this is it too. It's, it's as you're saying that there are a lot of talented people in all genres living yes. in even in this yes. small city of yes, Tauranga, as definitely. we all do, who yes. are adding so much to people's lives and we just don't really see it. We sort of pass it by without seeing it and then suddenly They'll be noticed, yes. and like yourself, just recently, of course. Yes, um, yes, with, thank with you. Thing, which we'll get on to later on, actually. But um, an interesting thing is that when you, I don't know what age you, you were when you went to um, Europe as a nanny. That was influential because mm. um, while I, I, I can remember making a definite decision, in fact, I was talking to somebody last night about it, and they said, oh, when did you, why did you go to, how did you go to Europe in the 60s, early 60s, mm. uh, when Beatles, Carnaby Street, um, I think it was just pre-Scott McKenzie and Flowers in Your Hair and in um, San Francisco yes. and the new, the new order started to take off personal choice, yep. the variety of choices that um, we now just take for granted mm. pretty much. Uh, sometimes I think we have too much choice in, men in some ways, but however, if we manage our choices, I think we do. We can we can do the right things. But um, at that stage, uh, I had sort of lost my way a little because in my teenage years, early teens, I had decided that uh, how wonderful to be able to walk down New York mm. or a major city with a yes. portfolio in your hand. I followed ballet and art and fashion design, I thought I'm going to be um, a textile designer because that might give me my income so I can fashion design in my spare time. So I knew that even back then, yeah. Courage, Dior, um, the beautiful, fabulous fashion houses, they all had their glorious oh, illustrations. Yes, exactly right. Yes, and I think this is it. Um, often I'm coming across those old illustrations and so forth and I've actually yes. kept them because... Or they're, they're, it, yeah. doesn't it get your heart going? Oh, it, it does. And your head moving? Yeah. I mean, from my point of view, of, of from architecture and so forth, I can see the structure and the lines and, and, and how, how it's all formed. And, yes. But from your point of view, yes. you see the flow and the colours and the patterns. And the and the lines, Phil, because yeah. you and I cross-reference mm, here. Yes. And um, some people say, oh, but how do you enjoy the flow and the uh, um, enjoy the and, and project the different... 
um, the different light forces that you do in your work when you've trained as a, uh, with straight lines, yes. i.e. an illustration. But I think because I have two, par- two parts that I've equally, equally had to use in my mm. brain because of the ch- roads I've chosen here and they're the, along li- in life and um, still choosing them, but um, the uh, structural, the accounting, the organisation organizational side of my mind as well as the it works very harmoniously with the artistic side so I'm basically a very practical person that allows my artistic side to flourish and mm. I that's why I decided three years ago to re-establish myself think in the way of starting restarting my art as a business and learning, um, developing, and, and and being taught the social medias and how to link everything together. Upgrade my website, and um, sometimes I don't know when to stop talking, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but that, that just shows the passion of what you're involved with. And I, I'm so, much the same. Once I start on my subject, it's just you know just goes crazy. But yes. <laughs> I'm just going to read a list of the things that you have been involved with that I know of. Um, oh. Apart from, you know, the, I might but, have forgotten. Well, basically, <laughs> a, architectural illustrator and illustration yes. and graphics in general, garden art fest, gardening, color, uh, all sorts of techniques that you've picked up along the way, um, portraits, still life, um, flowers and, and things, cards, print quality things. You know, you where you've extended into into yes. other things. Um, um, basically, being overseas and, and on on. What would you call them? Um, learning ex- exhibitions, right. expeditions. Sorry, and then just recently, um, being filmed for a yes. Well, thing. I think the thing that alerted me going overseas when I was so young, I didn't take the advantage of my opportunities, and the only reason I came back to New Zealand from Europe was um, I was so homesick, and I mm. had mum, my parents had had a, uh, the sixth member of our family. I was the oldest yes. member of six, and I was so terribly homesick, and at 20 years of age, I didn't make the wisest choices. When I came back to New Zealand, the, it was there were the, New Zealand was in a slump, a financial slump. Mm. There were no jobs, literally none. So I lost my way for quite a number of years. Um, in from the pathway that I that was most important to me, but through life we put things aside because we ameliorate. I think is that the right yes, word? Yes, exactly. Ameliorate everything to just survive on the, uh, on the platform that we're on at the time, and so life has been my learning experience. And I worked and I was hosted in uh, as a nanny. I think I was hosted by two wonderful families in Europe, and they taught me. They showed me the way people. Um, People live mm. uh, the niceties of life. How how extraordinary people are still very ordinary people. So I learned a lot of life skills from them. And in more recent years, when my husband was ailing with mm. um, dementia, we joined a group to go back to Europe. And bingo! As soon as I hit French soil, my French came flowing right back to yes. me, and it was wonderful. So I've really made a point of keeping French language, adding on to my Italian. And um, so I'll go back to Florence, I'll go to Florence, haven't been to Florence yet, to study for a week in May and two other weeks to absorb the city and learn about the colours, the textures, the light, the people, the antiquity, which we don't have here in New Zealand. No, and, and that's it. And as you were that's saying, well, no, exactly right. And what you were saying before, too, about how um, literally. You went to, to Europe and that as a nanny while everyone else was sort of heading towards America and England because of the change of life and the change in the world that was going on in these huge, powerful movements. And you mm. went to a place where there was huge history involved and, and a different mm. way of living and a different way of looking at life as well. Most definitely. Yeah. And coming from Gore, yes. raw ex, you know, farming community, tiny little yes. community. Um, although my mother was, she would have, she was a scholar at school and she excelled. Mm. Um, but she and my dad brought up a, a large family, and um, and 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 my little story is probably symptomatic of an awful lot of people. I went over with a girlfriend, yes. and the excitement of going out of New Zealand on a boat <laughs> for five weeks traveling, and it was it's fabulous when I think back. 
Mm, maybe I couldn't afford to go on a boat five weeks <laughs> travelling now. It would need to be something quite nice. But but as you say, it was the it was the actual I think the physical thing of travelling, I think now we're we're sort of so instant in the world. Yes. We'll jump on a plane and yes. within say anything from four to twenty four hours we can be in any place in the world. Whereas in those days it was actually the experience of the travel, the experience of meeting people as well. And and it's actually you you, yeah. you did touch on a, a thing just before. You said how we tended to put, or well, we still do probably in, in some respects, we tend to put our own lives and hold it into this sort of hiatus for a while until something sort of triggers it. And then you realise, mm-hmm. actually, this is where I want to be. This is what I should be doing. And and you're picking up, like you were saying, you picked up those pieces from the past and realised that moving forward, you have this passion and this involvement and you want to get it back again. I mean, it's never, ever gone, but you're tending to sort of put it aside a little bit for, for other things in life. Exactly, Phil. Yeah. Well, there are the several factors that spirited me forth, mm. and uh, maybe they're similar to other people. I do, um, I do get feedback from other um, men and women of my age that, you know, this every stage in our lives has opportunities to do or not do, mm. and when I think a magic time open for me when my my wonderful husband Lynn mm. um, when we met and we just danced and and worked hard well I say we danced now that's probably an artistic version of <laughs> <laughs> because um, Lynn didn't particularly like dancing per se which I adore dancing I do mm. music dance um, I was talking to a young girl about ballet last night and she lives in Massachusetts I met a family from Massachusetts mm. and we tried to connect and we connected with other things that are, um, with artistic things that are happening in New York and another artist friend of mine, Facebook friend of mine who lives near me in, in Massachusetts in some area. Anyway, I mustn't die, uh, diverse mm-hmm. from the point was that um, as, as, uh, as I think a very important part of my life um, my children and um, my husband Lynn, the first 10 years of our marriage and um, when my business was going so strongly and then he turned his, he was um, at his optometry mm, business, yeah. started climbing, he took a partner and it developed. So we were both in our respective businesses climbing yeah. and, and burgeoning. And then at about the 10-year point he was diagnosed with dementia. Mm. So um, about far so... We, we managed quite, uh, I managed quite well for five or six years and then um, I started going downhill and our health advisor said, right, Jenny, it's time for to look at Lynn going into more sophisticated care. Mm. So that's what we do. That's what we did. But um, just harken quickly back to the Europe thing, I kept remembering our, our six-week European holiday yes. and the... Um, the beauty and the antiquity and waving at this, at this dear little old ancient French woman that was leaning out of her first floor window right de- down near the markets in France, um, I'm sorry, in Nice, and this toothless little grin and I waved at her and she looked at me, I waved at her and smiled and she smiled back with this <laughs> and I've got a photo of it and I <clears throat> intend to paint it one day, but it just hasn't happened yes. yet. Anyway, I thought, oh, the age, this is... And then we went on to Italy and uh, Lake um, Maggiore and, and, and Venice and just had this wonderful trip. So um, when we arrived back, Lynn remembered some things, but then when he went into care, I thought, oh, that did something that to my heart and my mm. mind. I thought, I really feel strongly attracted to both Europe and then um, and so I thought mm, one day it would be nice to go back and spend time there. In the meantime my son has been an executive with an IT company in the States and he is now, he and his family, he and my daughter-in-law and grandchildren uh, now live in Dallas. So um, between San Jose where they lived in Dallas I've had the opportunity and the encouragement and the great good luck mm. to be able to journey back and forth and be influenced by not only the cities and some of the the, um, the good and bad um, influences yes. there 
but better be able to so much more, even more, shall I say, appreciate the fact that I am a New Zealander. I don't call mm. myself a Kiwi. I don't particularly care, and I might get, I might, might get um, pulled over the coals for this. I don't like us as New Zealanders being called Kiwis because a Kiwi is a flightless bird. <laughs> if there's anything less flightless in this world, it's New Zealanders. We're moving all the time. We yeah. love travel yeah, we do. because we're so isolated. I think it's a little bit like the Icelandic people, the Scandinavian people. We all tra- we're all travellers. And that is it. We enjoy travelling. We enjoy yes. meeting people. We enjoy things in life touching us, you know, whether it's art, culture, Absolutely. different people, Some, could be anything. Our hearts are open, our yes. minds, hopefully our minds are open mm, yeah. to receive. And so these exciting things keep spinning my wheels and keep my, well, I'm naturally an optimistic person. Yeah. And uh, some people get brassed off with my optimism, <laughs> holding their hand and saying, let's dance through the tulips. Well, I do have my practical oh. side, of course, as you know, as yes. well, Phil. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, I'm reasonably well balanced for an artist. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but that's an it. Artist? Well, you're not quite. Oh, mind you, I suppose, do we still, are we still, do we still have the artists around like the Dalis and so forth who are really out there and, and yes, we do. eccentric we and do. so forth? Yeah. You're on the cusp, I must admit, but that's fine. You know, you're allowed to be. I'll accept that, Phil. Very good. I can't <laughs> deny it when I'm on film, can I? <laughs> oh, such but, good fun. But the fact is, you, you, you have to have uh, a lust for life. Yeah, now, that's what I do have. Yes. And this is also part, I think, don't think I explained really what I was thinking before because I went rabbiting on in other mm. areas, but... I'm also walking the walk for my husband because mm. he can't walk the walk. Yes. And he 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 has shown me a life and, and leaves me in a in a in a comfortable situation mm. in a lovely home with beautiful gardens yep. that um, I manicure with care and I'm living so I feel because of our huge love I feel I'm living part of my Existence for him, and, and which that, I am. and that is it because there yeah. is that connection that yes. you guys. I mean, I, yeah, when when you and Lynn, Lynn got together, oh. you know, that's the sort of thing. There was a connection there. It just, oh, just, just it was magic. just like a chemistry. Yes. you know, and it's a bit like I suppose like Diane and I, you know, yes. and it is. And then yeah. suddenly you find that it's like a switch. Yes, it is. Yeah, and so um, the lust for life and the the absolute um, uh, what is the right word. The the import um, the important part of applying that and not while well, I can relax and read a book just like the next person I don't do that very often mm. not as much as I'm going to do next year yes. you know next year it all there's always a next there's year there's always yes um, next year I may do that but at the moment I'm enjoying the other thing with the um, the other side of that is that I tend to park myself in my studio and because I have to, to produce mm. the work that I want to do. And therefore, my social aspect of my personality uh, becomes a little cut off. But I'm starting to address that so that I have that balance of social activity mm. and getting out and meeting new people because I need to. I mean, I'm, I don't want to be a nun for the rest of my life, for goodness <laughs> sake. Um, and so I think I can massage we if 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 we live a really good life, we keep our mind mind open to the things that we we need to achieve, the um, things that our personalities need. So massaging all aspects of life to bring the whole. I'm very lucky. I love my life. Mm-hmm. And but I think that's it. If if you're actually enjoying life, even with its 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 bad days and its good days and everything mm. else, it's a real good mix. And, and mm. I think this is that a lot of people maybe their talents aren't being brought to the surface because they're dwelling on things that are not so good in their lives or something That's like that. That's right. Whereas Mm-mm. we're all going through that. We Mm-mm. all do that. But do. actually to, to have that vision, as you're saying, like always next year there's something else, but it's tomorrow actually, and, and tomorrow you get up and you go into your studio and there's, there's, a, there's a new incentive. There might be something Absolutely. that's, you know. And there's always tonight. Oh, yes, I'll just do that hour's work before I go to bed. Yeah. And two hours later, you just scribble, 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 or writing, because I love to write. Yes, yeah. And um, also, one of the things I'm enjoying, too, is that earlier this year, I started inviting people to join me for watercolour workshops. Mm. There's two distinct areas that I keep in my mind. 
um, of my work. One is watercolour pure botanicals and the other is my um, well, watercolour on one side, oils on the other. So my oil paintings, my botanicals uh, tend to be watercolour, my series of old composers, Mozart, Beethoven, all the composers I started painting a series of about 2006. Um, uh, they're starting to line up and starting to be taken notice of. I've got a little Chopin on the go at the moment, but that is a separate, and I actually paint in a separate room, which is my little office, because I've got views out onto my lovely courtyard yes. and so forth. The other side is is my oils. Now, when I started oils, I realised I'm standing much of the time. You've got to stand back from them. So I carpeted my two-car garage out, mm. and occasionally um, my car goes in. But <laughs> it's beautifully set up with uh, lots of tables, great light. Um, I've repainted it. It's it's a beautiful studio. Mm. And so people can come in and look at my work there, or if they want to look in, in a lounge setting, I welcome in it into my home. But also I conduct my watercolour workshops there. But essentially that's my oil studio. Yeah. And so I can work, work very separately, but very happily move from one, one to the other. Yeah, and in some ways too, you're able to actually differentiate because you're in those different spaces. Yeah, and that's also part exactly. of that influence thing. Yeah. Exactly, Phil. And um, one of my lovely artist friends, I don't mix in a community of artists generally mm. because I just get on with my thing, but a lovely artist friend um, gently encouraged me to just have a play with oils some years ago. Mm. And I said, no, 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 I'm a watercolourist, pure, simple. Yep. And anyway, I tried, I, I bought myself about six colours. Mm. She loaned me a DVD, which um, which I learned the Flemish technique from. Oh, wow, well, talk about love. Another love. I thought, I haven't got room for any more love. Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> and away I went. Yeah. Oh, and it's just wonderful. It's time-consuming, but then I find if I have several pieces at different stages, I allow them to dry, to dry mm. and there's, um, there's a beautiful medium which allows... Uh, essentially the oil to dry over a 24-hour period. I'm very careful careful about my dry, my layering and my drying. I mm. keep a very careful record of everything, each layer on each painting. So I have, um, I think I've just lost the word for it, I have the, the background for mm. it. There is an art... W um, There's a terminology for terminology it. Terminology yes. for it, mm. which I can't quite mm. recall. Yes, I can't yeah. quite recall a few things at the moment. Because that's it. There is, there is a, a, even though art is supposed, like you're involved with art and so forth, and it's supposed to be sort of very free and, and open and, and thing, it actually is a very strong structure behind it all. In, Depending on where you want to go, I think, mm. so I'm learning more and more. I enjoy a lot of the sort of 40, 30 and 40-year-old um, top-of-the-line American artists, the uh, Jeremy Lipking, David Gray's work, mm. just stunning. Um, Juliet Aristides, I could go, I could rave on, but <laughs> they all know who they are. <laughs> um, because, I, uh, yes, I work on my Facebook, actually. Mm. It's my one of my biggest marketing tools, and I link that with my website. Do a wee bit Insta of Instagram and Pinterest, but I haven't worked at them to the fullest simply because I haven't the time. Yeah. And um, and I'm not that interested. I'm interested in connecting with the people, but I'm not interested in, in the time wasting. I'm more interested in fine tuning my work and developing. And there's a, there's an Italian artist. And there's one. Of, there's a lot of British and American. Um, botanical artists that I absolutely adore and follow, and they are influential. And I see, mm. I see the work, in, work internationally is growing and growing and growing. By the time I'm eighty, which is sometimes I think it's just around the corner, um, eighty or ninety, and I'm no longer, uh, you know, f flowing with all yes. of the work I'm putting through now. Um, the, the new generation will have even taken that further, yeah. and I'm sure there'll be new. Oh. quantities, quantification, there'll be new products, new ways of looking yes. at things, your touch screens, you'll be able to think or roll your eyes and things will be happening. Mm. There's so much technology moving, so it's we exciting. Just, we were just talking about that earlier. Yeah, we were. Yeah. And it's, 
That, that's right. I mean, so therefore, even when you Science when you're stuff. old and dotter and you can't hold a paintbrush, you'd be able to just touch to... a screen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, with my nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, yes. But exactly. but, but that is because. Um, People sort of forget that, you know, they think of art as, as all the old artists, the Italianates, the Italianates and people like that and some of the very, very brilliant English old artists and so forth. But there's a modern movement as well. There's oh. a lot of modern oh, talent Phil. coming through. Oh, it just breaks my heart sometimes mm. seeing these beautiful images. And often I'm a bit rushed to photograph my work and, and I don't, uh, I think my mind has decided not to develop on the photography side because I do not want another learning curve. Mm. It doesn't sit very comfortably with me, even though I'm a creative and I I can see and dissect light and colour and all the rest. But I have um, a, a wonderful band of young people around me when I say young people mm. in their 30s, 30s and, and 40s. Um, one's um, Tracy Stamatakos, master photographer. She and I laugh a huge lot together. Mm. She does my, she did my original photo <coughs> shoot to launch me onto Facebook. We talk and laugh and paint. I paint, she photographs. I paint to her photograph. Well, I'm about to paint to some of her photography. Small exhibition we're mm. doing. She painted to my, uh, she photographed to my paintings at the last Garden and Art Fest and we we call ourselves the paintbrush and the pixel which is was coined yes, by Tracy cool. yeah, yeah. and we bring that out every now, the paintbrush and the pixel and um, then my lovely, lovely friend Catherine Overall, she was the person who, who I was referred to who um, taught me to Facebook uh, has taught me to link in. I'm not terribly good at it. I have to do another training session, but I'm still ahead of probably many of my peers mm. to um, try and try and use my own um, creative way to 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 form. And it's exciting for somebody to come along and say, Jenny, we want you to show the Jenny the Jennyisms of and. Your qualities and your work, whereas I thought, oh, I don't, I, I'm a back room person. I don't want to go out the mm. front, but I've learned to be a front room person yeah. too. And the thing is that, as mm. you're saying, those isms that you have are yours and, and yours alone. And it's the way you do things, the way you manipulate paint, the way you manipulate images, things like yeah, that. Yeah, and way I manipulate words, and I have to go back and yeah. cancel out the spell checks. <laughs> <laughs> Some crazy things sometimes slip through in my emails and yes. my my texts. Mm. And uh, one lovely friend who's a journalist, Lindy, came back to me the other day and said, "Now, Jenny Coco, can you please translate it? It's not a French, it is not Italian, and it's certainly not English." <laughs> 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 yes, yeah, so I said, "Oh, well, I can only blame myself and spell check for that." Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. a lot of fun. Well, exactly right, and I think this is it. It's, it's having the fun in what you do, and it's it's not just locking yourself away for six months, creating a whole lot of images and paintings and so forth, and then put them out and sell them and then crash away for another six months. It's it's enjoying what you're doing and having fun doing it and actually the interaction with all the friends and people who, who are part and parcel of that. So important, yeah. for particularly as for much of my um, the age of my 20s and 30s, um, the, the paths I chosen, I had chosen to take, were very, very hard on me. I put myself into a dif into difficult situation so I lived a very much uh, more difficult life than I do, certainly than I do now I'd never ever want to go back to those years but you know you you whenever we're down um, we we hold hands with people that are positive and we link and say right yes our our, our futures our destinies people may say that God, they're God-given mm. and arranged, but I think much of our destinies tend to be in our own hands yeah. to grasp the opportunities that are offered out there, the platters and platters of them. And if we don't, then that's our choice. Oh, no, that's exactly Simple, right. Simple, yeah. really, isn't and, it? And if you make a, a, a wrong platter choice, you, the next I've time... I've made a few wrong platter <laughs> choices, Phil, I can tell you. But, but I don't another think one I will always now. come along and change the direction again. If so we yeah, yeah, if we yeah. observe and, yes. and, and take people with us. Mm. And that's what the workshops are doing now. Yeah. Is particularly I'm thinking of three of the wonderful um, wonderful people who've come to my workshops have gone almost dancing down the drive with fear mm. 
renditions more than fair in mm. one case last weekend yeah. this girl i said well dear you just better keep in your mind that i might be coming to your workshop one of these days yes. so isn't it fabulous yeah. to see yeah. people and that's, and that's it so i mean it's it's discovering that extra talent out there and said like mm. um diana myself and you do and i'm sure Diva does as well you know you you're running into people every single day that have totally different talents and in different work lifestyles that than what we do mm. ourselves yes and they're influencing us yes. and then in, in some ways as you say you're also influencing them back but it's just amazing to uncover these all the time and and some people are just um so ecstatically um well even happy is the wrong word in what they're doing they, they just want to impart that information and, and that help and, and as you do for other people now but yeah. you've also been influenced by other people in the past that have taken you in this direction. Exactly, yeah. Phil. Yeah. And realising that most people don't know that, uh, where the things that we do have come from. Mm. So this is nice to broadcast it. Yes. I mean, not literally today, but broadcast in the general, t- more general yes. terms. Mm. Um, and also there's so many creators... I do feel, as I've said this to one or two people recently, I do feel for about, in New Zealand, about the, for every five people I meet, two, two are artists of sort, um, some mm. sort, they're creatives of one sort or another. The third is attending watercolour or acrylic workshops, and the fourth has considered going to workshop. And so there's only one person that maybe left that, either loves or doesn't love, or well, most people enjoy mm. their versions of art. There's only one person to enjoy art and adore the rest, and also one person left to buy the rest of our art, which is another point. It's <laughs> quite difficult to make a living in New Zealand. I don't know many people that do no, and, and from that, art. No, but, but, but that's it. I think also now with the world being so much smaller, as in we're able to travel and get to things quicker, is, is the fact that New yes. Zealanders are actually going out there in more and more in droves than we've ever done before to experience the world. And and when, when, you, when mm. people meet you and they say, where are you from? And you say, from New Zealand. And they, they're so interested in wanting to talk to you about... Because yes, we've got a fairly good reputation yes, around the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, And that's obviously why the camera crew, come, the film crew came knocking on your door as well, because of not only your talent, but also the, the vibrancy in what you do and... And, and, Thanks, it, Phil, and yeah. how you were pushing life, you know. This is the thing, I think so. so. They must have found me online, mm. um, and of course, I wasn't the only one. I mean, no, I was true. the one hundred and fortieth yes, artist yes. Um, in their five-year odyssey, and now they're about to break through uh, and move into the American market. So I feel also fortunate to be involved or to have been selected by um, by this company. Uh, because it will be the last. So the group of us as artists in New Zealand that have been selected, mm. we will be, we will all be um, shown and broadcast over television in the US. Who gets that opportunity? One can't really buy it unless you know oh, you're very yes. wealthy uh, or you know the right people. So this company, Graham started this company and. Um, He's work, he and his team have worked so they're still working so mm. hard to make a breakthrough, and I hope he is he is um, very soon financially rewarded for this because he he's promoting a lot of us. Yeah, and and uh, this, this, this is this this is the thing too is that there are so many fabulous artists out there. I mean, mm. I mean, you included. I, I mean, I've seen Thanks, your work. I've Phil. seen your That's work develop very over the kind years. Kind of you. Oh, I know. But you know, but I have. I've, I've, you know, I really I, pushed it. I, yes, exactly right. But that was the thing. I've, se- I've seen your art and your different talents develop, and, and from, um, from just things, but literally from architectural versions to oh, actually now. I love now. those years. Yes, yes. love the years when I was rendering and the people I met, people I connected with. Um, I joined the American. I've, I keep. Thinking that there are many American institutions that I've joined mm. or um, associations I've enjoy, enjoyed over the years. One was the American. Sorry, my interrupt. Or do you want no. me to talk? Yeah. Okay. The American <laughs> Society of <laughs> Architectural Illustrators. Yes. Because I'll just go. <clears throat> I'll just chatter on forever. Yeah. Um, and I joined that about mm, when I was oh, about two or three years mm. into my 
illustration company, and that came about because I was made redundant from um, a multidisciplinary engineering company, mm. which I love being part of. And um, the only reason I knew about 3D renderers was because I used to open the tender box and um, analyse the tenders, put them on a paper and present them to the directors mm. to select, mm. to, to uh, analyse and, and assess who, you know, the tenders for any given development, building commercial money commercial building projects and I thought oh so I asked a few questions oh yes they were all designed they were um, painted in Wellington or Auckland mm. and there were no other designers locally so when I was made redundant I got myself um, some books I um, talked to a guy called Rob Brazier I think because Rob did 3D renderings for a building company here but he was he was mainly a designer. But mm. I remember him dashing off these renderings. I thought, oh, man, I'd love to do that. So I started doing that, yes. and it was a and and then knocking on doors. But it was just the black and white line drawings in those those years. That must have been in the early nineties, nineteen nineties. So um, and then I picked up books and asked questions. Da 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 da. And then I found this fabulous book on American architectural illustrators. Yep. Joined the company. Uh, joined the association as a um, uh, bought a subscription to it. And then probably about four to five years later, they had uh, an Australian um, an Australian director. And so the it was the first time the American Association's annual... Um, meeting had been held out of the States and it was held in Brisbane and I went to it. My very own, um, um, I've lost the word now, again, another word, workshop, what was it? Um, uh, what like was a, a seminar? No, semin it's, uh, yes. better than a, bigger than a seminar. It was conference. Conference. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> we, we do rely on each other. Spell check we? going on in my head here. That's yeah, right. Yes, conference. So it was the first conference outside of the the, um, the US, and it was held in Brisbane, where I met uh, so many of the mm. idols. I'd met through this book I bought. I ordered right. it. took me three months to get through. through and, and, of course, that doesn't happen now. We can get things almost instantaneously. Mm. And um, so I came across a lot of people that I subsequently kept in touch with, one yeah. or two of them. Yeah. And, and, and as you say, yeah, and I think that's it. It's that, there's, that you've got to have a bit of drive as well to, to make these things happen sometimes. And actually, right, I'm going to go and do that. And you Even just, though you're scared to, you've yes, got to push. Yes, yeah. You've got to push yeah. it. And it's like, um, I mean, you, you've just had a, a couple of exhibitions recently here in Tauranga. Two nights ago. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And there's another one coming up yeah. in... Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's it. I mean, your first exhibition, I'm not saying these ones, but your very first exhibition must have been scared for, you know, you must have been a bit scared about, oh, okay, are people going to like what I've done? And Well, yes. Was that um, through where do Garden I and Art Fest? Or Garden was it, and yes. Art Fest. Um, was it Garden and Art Fest? I think it was. And, and also uh, um, it was at Mills Reef and there were several of us uh, exhibiting there, I think. Oh, they put me in the barrel room downstairs, mm. and it was a lovely environment. And I'm so proud of the fact. I think, I think I sent out about 150 invitations, and we sent them out physically in those days, thinking the horrific <laughs> cost of postage and all the rest of it. Those days, listen to us back in those days. Yes. Um, mm. And the the. Oh, Oh, it's so funny thinking, gosh, Phil, you've triggered all sorts yeah. of mind you, Mind you, the barrel room was very appropriate, seeing as how you had that, that affinity, affinity with Italian and French life oh, and everything else. So, so the barrel room was a perfect way to start. Yes, except that people didn't know to go there because yes. it was in a winery and the, the, their main objective, of course, was selling wine, so mm. everyone had to go through their bottle store and went around, and it wasn't always obvious during the weekend, but for the opening night... I've got about 120 people there out of mm. the 150 or so. Yeah. Fabulous. It was a great night. And um, maybe I should do that again soon. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. now, so I think I had about, I, don't, I can't remember how many paintings, about 50 or 60. Mm. 
But funnily enough, the landscape paintings, which I no longer do, I might pick it up again at some times, of a special little area of our Tauranga down Dive Crescent, mm. they all just sold on that night. Yeah. And some of my florals, most of, some of my florals went. Um, I was very excited. That was so good. It was. It felt so sophisticated and and. I've made it to have mm. my first one under my belt, and so I did. I I, I sort of followed the pattern of Susan Tustain, Harrison mm. Tustain. Susan set a sort of benchmark for most of us here, and um, followed her example in in many ways of conducting your own um, your own exhibition. I've never had a gallery, never been involved in a gallery, and I've assumed that galleries just didn't think I was the right fit for their for their market. Mm. Um, that may change at some stage. Actually, I do have a little gallery in the Waikato that's just asked if she could be my representative, so I'm going with that for the next period. Mm. And She's a lovely woman, Kay, and I'm doing an exhibition there in February, oh, February good. 2 next yeah, year. Yeah, because that's, I think, yeah, I'm sure that there are a lot of gallery operators or directors out there who think that the, the local talent isn't quite good enough, so they keep importing... Um, paintings or other exhibitions, sculptures and so forth, artworks, but they're missing the opportunity of seeing literally what's happening around them in their own um, back backyards. I think so, Phil, mm. and um, I'm not quite sure how you get there. My mind's just not wide enough to think of all of those things as well. I've got enough going on. I was going to say, you've got enough on your plate at the I moment. Have, yes, I have, I yes. have. And keeping in touch, my, my dear husband, Lynn, mm. visit him each week and um, he's usually in fine fear. He still recognises me at this point, cool. uh, but he hasn't got much language left, mm. and enjoying all the new friends I'm making and um, looking forward to spending Christmas in Dallas with my yeah. lovely grandchildren, mm. my lovely son, lovely daughter-in-law, and all the new friends I'm making over there. So life is pretty full for me. It's very exciting. And looking forward to uh, Florence. Yes. Next, that, uh, that I'm really working hard to save and make sure that that happens. And I'm booked in there. I've booked my uh, my my week's tuition with uh, Jura Bedic, who's um, not was not known to me before, but uh, it was a, this is interesting how immediate our lives are on Facebook and our media. David Gray on one mm. of his postings the other day said, "Oh, and I'm sharing something from Jura Bedic, one of the most revered artists." And I thought, oh, "This is taking a workshop on the <laughs> There's only ten of us in the workshop." Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah, they're small. This is at yes. the Art Academy of Florence, mm. which is an American-run institution. Daniel Graves has um, operated that for, I think, probably about 13, 15 mm. years, mm. quite a good amount of time. And so I've never studied at a formal institution, and that's the motivation for me, yeah. going in and trying to get to have them put the polish on my work and just help me lift to that next level and maybe... Show me where I'm making some errors of judgment um, in my little corner of the world that they've already understand from mm. their years and years of proximity to yeah. the best. Yeah, and that's right. I mean, going and, and seeing all these other people, and, and um, they're not so much mega stars in the art world, but certainly are near enough to it. But it's yes. it's that it's that they're under cross, the radar. Yeah, and it's that cross influence um, of you, them, and it's that whole mix which keeps, as you're saying, just keeps polishing and polishing and polishing. And and mm. I think that's it. None of us are um, should ever be satisfied with what we're doing right now. We should Aspirational. Always, yeah. yeah. I, I, and someone said to me, he said, why aren't you retired? And I said, I'm actually enjoying what I do and creating now more than I've ever done. And in fact, I think I still hope that I'm doing my creative things Till I'm eighty or ninety, if I'm lucky, yeah. live that long. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we will, we will, Phil. We've yeah. got, we, we, we've got we too will. much to do. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yes, we've got yes. Far too much yeah. to do. But um, they were going for time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, I don't think was, I'm just trying to think what. Well, uh, um, like, yeah, because like, like we're about forty-five minutes in. Mm. Oh, I see. Oh, no, this is that's brilliant, Phil. I uh, thank you so much for all all of your. Um, Lost another word. So, <laughs> Phil, thank you so much for what your. What you were um, like actually saying is that like you know you enjoy what you're doing 
right now yes. and kind of conti- and um, want to do it as much as you can. Yeah. Like I feel as a creative person, if you're not doing what you love, then that can be really. Uh, no, you, you're quite right. In fact, yeah. um, if if it was. In the perfect world, I would actually do what I do and not charge anything because I love yes. it so much. Yes, yeah. exactly. However, Exactement. reality speaks. Yeah. But yes, yeah. I mean, and I think half the half the problems that we all find as mm-hmm. creative people is is enthusing our clients to the same level. And I think a lot of people that we run into in life are sort of they're worrying too much about today and not even thinking about tomorrow. But that's the whole purpose in life, just mm. to think about, oh, the past has been used. Yes. Okay, we learn from the past at a level, but for goodness sake, let's not live in the past. No. We've got to plan and think because, and some of the interest, that, mm. the joint interest that we have, Phil, one, um, and one of the aspects for me personally, I think it runs right through all of us as creatives that are trying to make a difference. We have the opportunity because... Um, we are re- fairly well known, we have ideas, we've got experience and we've got connections with each yes. other uh, to put together plans and objectives for the future. Not for the things that we want today, mm. but mm. the things that we are learning to see for the youth and the future generations that's going to make our our local area, this is much, uh, much of what you and I are doing yes. at the moment, Phil, for our new, this fabulous, fabulous region of this fabulous country we live in, um, to excel and respond and not be afraid to take big steps that are appropriate to develop this region to the very best it can be. And it's going to take brave decisions, but hopefully good decisions with business leaders and um, people that are not mm. quite are not quite leaders. I don't see myself as a leader, but I do have a contributory mm. role mm. to be able to. We all do, yeah. And I we think do, yes, yes, David. You, yeah, you're, you're quite right. It's it's the fact that I think people forget that even a, even if they're only contributing a small part, that small part is part of that cog that makes the whole the whole wheel, shall we say? Yes. And and yes, it's yes, very much so. And and I think too many yeah. people step back and say, oh no, look, it's not my field, or I like sh- I, um, I don't have anything to contribute. But it's surprising how even the smallest thing can actually be a. It's like you plant a seed and it grows, and it's exactly oh, the same thing. One absolutely. person's simple little um, thought can actually. A lot of other people can pick up on that and add mm. to it, whereas you know um, that this this person may think, okay, I don't have the wherewithal or the background or the experience or mm. the talents, but this is an idea, and then but let other people pick up that idea and, mm. and grow it. And I think this is what we should all be striving to do, and what what we all do in our own artistic ways. And it's an artistic and intellectual nursery. Yes, yeah. That from where 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 the plants of the future creative creativity grow mm. and um, we're all feeling a bit disappointed in our city centre and um, it's there's, there's little point in just sitting back and criticising without contributing. Yeah, and that's the same thing. I always say, look, um, don't complain unless you're prepared to actually go out and do something about it. You know, And it's the yes. same old, same old. I mean, it's just like oh, everything else. Make but, the time, Jenny, yeah. make yeah, the yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like um, even... a like a little bit of support for an idea. Yeah. Even yes. Though, like they may not have like skills, but they kind of like want to um, help bring it forward. Yes, dive so That helps yeah. a lot because, as mm. you said, like it is about the future of the arts in our region. You know, and, and that's not a whole a, yes. community. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and people think arts are, um, you know, paintings. But they're not, not arts is so much more. I mean, mm. it, it's, it's graphics, it's design, it's th- it's even thinking and writing. Thinking and writing, yeah, very you know, much so. And and and, um, and the physical all, arts, yes, the exactly right. Arts. Yeah, and it's it is those all of those mm-hmm. things. And in fact, um, I've often said that there is um, unfortunately a lot of our architecture should have more art. It should be more of an artistic piece rather than just a a big slab of mm. something construction, yeah. and. Um, and and just to make people aware of their surroundings, because we spend a lot of time inside buildings or around buildings or, or out in parks and reserves and surrounded by landscapes and all sorts of things. And 
you take a bit of that, you take a bit of those landscapes or those or those little vignettes of, of um, flowers and so forth. Sure. Yeah, and you're yes. making still lifes of them, but it's actually capturing them. And and then the people put them on their walls mm. or, or in their galleries or in their offices, and they get inspired by them. Yes, you know? well, the flowers and the, the new, um, the, 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 the upgraded still lifes mm. that... Uh, coming, I, I'm seeing some in my head now. Some are stu- uh, I've got a couple on canvas at the moment. There's um, there's a, a, a delightful Italian artist called Gianluca Corona, and he is influ- influencing me with my um, still lies very much at the moment for, for, from the point of view of the range of colours he uses. In greys now, greys mm. is something that I'm interested in at the moment. But greys are what? They're a combination of all the colours, and um, so his he, he made quite a an in, a very interesting comment, which well, it interested me. I think it is is worthy of mentioning that while we admire the the beautiful art artists of the 16th and century, 17th century, we do live in a different era now. Our our perceptions, our artistic, our aesthetics are different. So we build our still lives maybe Mm. with views and coming from the love of that beauty but with an aesthetic that is very much of the century. And so I'm starting to work my way through those those thoughts and considerations and I'll probably spend quite a lot more time and quiet time now and not do so much marketing which has taken me away from from and I think this is normally the track that a lot of artists take it takes you quite a long way away from the very work that you want to focus on so um, there are a lot of things that the various things that we can teach each other as artists and um, I'm learning so much from so many different people but you just struck a chord in my mind then Phil when you were talking about slabs of concrete because you know my mind rocketed right back to um, a time many many years ago when I was fortunate enough to see a new build Mm. on a barren hillside in France and it was literally that it was a great big um, oblong concrete yes. and it was one of the most stunning things I'd ever seen uh, floor to ceiling glass and um, there were uh, living quarters at one end and the <coughs> guest quarters at the other and but most of the house was just this great big slab slab for the kitchen everything just went behind revolving doors mm. this is going back way before this is probably 30 40 years ago yes. And sitting on the table was a Giacometti, an original Giacometti statue. <laughs> and I didn't know what Giacometti... What it was in those... Yeah. Giacometti what meant. And, but then I very... Uh, this is an artistic family, I, <clears throat> and I learned very quickly. And my mind goes back to that, to say that's one of the influences that I would have missed if certain mm. um, blocks, playing blocks, hadn't been placed one on top of the other in a line, the linkage of life, and yes. This, yes. this can apply to all uh, of our no, lives. As you say, I mean, the, the, in that situation, the, um, that house for those people was the canvas of the artwork. Exactly. You know, it became the canvas that the, the stunning, artwork was placed or yeah. put into. And it's a bit like life, isn't it? What you just actually just said. That, that makes me quite cheerful thinking back to that. Mm. It was all about light yes. in the whole home. Mm. It was. It was mm. just simplicity. It was um, minimalistic. Yes, yes. And then huge big tapestries and canvas on another wall, one big piece, and it was just like an ode to beauty. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that is sometimes the most simplest things actually catch your eye and, and evoke the most emotion. You can have the most yes. elaborate things around yeah. you, but sometimes the most simplest, simplest little thing or the way it's, it's, it's colour or the way it sits against something else will put that impression on your, in your mind and it will sit there for years and years and years. And strange influence. I mean, you were mm. talking about greys and blacks and whites. Mm. I mean, I always look at things in, in, as far as light and shade and how light yes. and shade r- reacts. Yes. And yes, um, a lot of people don't get that. 
and it's it's not so much about the colors or the textures it's just about light and shade and the way it works and i think what was i was just thinking is that you know you have light and shade in your life and it's the we same we do it's the yes. same thing yeah it's just a different way of thinking yeah. about it yeah and i never thought about I never considered on on um, in the front of my mind, on an intellectual level, for years until more recently, and thinking this is what I play with every day. Yeah, is light and shade, and why do I, I angle a cam uh, the light on a certain object to lift it to project the shadows, which I love eggs. I'm playing a lot with mm. the eggs at the moment. Their shapes, their um, the point at which the life hits in their trajectory, the the reflected light that bounces back, and that little pool of light, the um, the shadow it reflects, the what is it called, the penumbra around the outside, the whole, and then the colours. Then you start mm. with the colours. That's just mm. the shades. Mm. Oh, so much to learn. <laughs> wow. So, but you know, like, like, the, um, one of the things that I love about art is that the experience of it is almost always subconscious, you know? Like, mm. you mm. have, like, put all this, like, energy and thought into, like, how it impacts, like, a certain color and, like, all this kind of yes. structural st stuff. Yes, And, but, like, f and that's important for, like, the experiencer to kind of just experience the yes. beauty subconsciously. Mm -hmm. Just be like, wow. Mm -mm. And they don't necessarily know why it's beautiful, but yes, but like yes. because it reaches something. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, exactly yes. right. Yeah. And yeah. so, like that goes back to the, like the, um, like the aesthetics of light and shade is that mm -mm. it's so subconscious how a certain shade mm. would like make us feel dreary or mm. some kind of other light would make yes. us, you know, <clears throat> lift us up. And at different times, the seasonal changes mm. too, Divart, um, talking about yeah. that. And um, I just suddenly thought Persian gardens, mm. through mm. a lot of my my um, reading and, and some of the beautiful, beautiful books I've got, I've got quite mm. a library that I thought I might leave to the art gallery um, because it would be, th there will be some that won't move from um, from era to era, but there'll be some that are always, um, that that have a, an endless state of life and have educational value for future generations, certainly for young students. But um, coming back to the, some of the Persian gardens and that's something maybe that our Western civilization, as far as my learning, I might be not be right here, but um, as far as, far as my learning went, that we didn't consider when we built a garden the, the light angles, the sense of the, the smells, the sense of water, the movement of water, the water of life, I think, for the Persians, mm. from the um, emotional, the intellectual and mm. the uh, spiritual sides of life. And that's one thing I we don't learn much about Iran here. In, in, in the Western world, but I happened to watch a little documentary on um, some channel recently, and Iran is, the cities are amazing, they're mm, so yes. modern, and while um, the gardens of Isfahan is one area I thought I'd love to go and see, and, and, and um, th there are various companies that do tours there, maybe I'll get there, maybe I won't, but I thought, here's this be there's beauty of some of these um, Middle Eastern countries when we hear so much about conflict all through the Middle East, and we know there is conflict in, mm. in areas, but they're all the, the, these areas of learning from the past, and the gardens, there are some some European artists of the early 19th century that painted works. And there was, um, I think, no, I'm, I'm, I'm reaching to try and remember his name because I love so many of these people. But um, Alma Tadema was one of the artists who painted, sometimes in their mind, beautiful images of Persia in the gardens and... Um, the women were always kept in at home. They weren't allowed to go mm. out, of course, and, and uh, with their vow, but they could take their vows off in their gardens. So somebody, uh, my reading recently was that the, this, these, some of these English artists or British artists um, must have imagined 
the subjects in the yes. gardens because they would never have been allowed there. No, no, that's exactly right. We're seeing a sort of like a, a romantic image of, yes, of what exactly. was it. Yeah, but in fact, yeah. it, it, as you were saying, um, the, it, it's, a, it's a real shame that unfortunately we have parts of the world which are war-torn at the moment, mm. which have created the most beautiful art and um, culture in, in our world. It makes us cry. It, it is, that, because, we're, because we're, they're, they're losing the people. That, um, literally, they are losing the people, but mm. they're also losing part of those cultural cities as well, which is yes. real heartbreaking. Yes. But, um, and as you say, from that romantic point of view, but it's also based on fact, is that um, even though they may not have been there to be able to draw these people in those surroundings, the, the surroundings were always there and hopefully will always be there too because they... Um, as you were saying, that there's light, there's shade. They use the wind. They use, I mean, the yes, air the itself. Too, they they, yes. they realise what the yes. air, sunlight, and all those things have, and, and what mm. what what's going on. And it's like understanding the world around you, and then interpreting that in, in art <clears throat> or in exactly, sculpture Phil. or you know yes. different things like that. Yes. And I think this is the influence which we're all enjoying, and and um, all of us who who appreciate yes. <clears throat> art in yes. all sorts of forms. Yes. Um, really yes. love to see and to experience and, and to sort of, mm-hmm. and to continue and to make mm-hmm. the younger people appreciate it as well, you know, saying, okay you, you've got to have a, a new modern world to, to face as you grow up but some of these influences which we are now involved with and what have influ- influenced us from the past mm-hmm. we can now give to you and you can then take it and make it of what you will so, you know, you can change it to to how they want to interpret art, how they want to interpret um, their travels in life Exactly, yeah. Phil, and each generation does things yeah. in slightly yeah. different ways yeah. and um, I just hope because of our financial, um, <clears throat> the, the international financial crash and crunch and whatever, all the influences it had, one of the influences, particularly in the States, I'm hearing, and it possibly is in other areas too, but in the States, um Art programs are being closed down because mm. they're seen that's a, a disposable. But a culture that doesn't have, like ours, that doesn't have st- uh, arts held up as part of our spiritual mm. and emotional importance um, is a culture that starts dying if because we're all related, science, technology, arts, they're all interlinked. There's interfaces throughout there. Yeah. And while we encourage our children, we should be encouraging our children to embrace um, sciences and technology, math, the whole works. They're all, they all have a creative edge, but they sh- we, we need to be um, bringing forward the arts and the the um, modern influences, but also the traditional, the traditional ways, and um, something else that interests me, probably coming from a garden, mm. the, the gardening and the <clears throat> landscape part of my my mind is the influence of school gardens because it's not only the feeding of young mm. children, and particularly in poorer areas, yes. um, showing these children. Gentleness, the gentleness of nature. How the little the little seed pod just shoots up its little um, little head out of the earth and starts growing, and then eventually produces leaves, flowers, fruit, um, all sorts of lovely things. And so the children are learning more about life than just producing something to eat. They're learning about life forces, and this is part of the everyday thing. And so the landscaping. In our com- in community landscaping is another part of things that I enjoy, and I see note I see notes every now and again coming through uh, the various media about oh so and so the council um, the council wherever it was um, refused to allow us to plant on the booms, and I was smiling because um, particularly in San Jose where my children were, when mm. I, I was amazed at all the boom gardens there. Yes. And sometimes there's a spalliate fruit trees. At the end of our street there was a particularly lovely one surrounded with roses, stunning roses. And it, it, the, 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 in the summer it bakes hard there. Yes. We know California has a water problem. But um, all of the... 
I mustn't get on to other things, must I? But all of the roses and then the fruit trees. So it was a useful garden and, and, this, and a beautiful garden. Yes, yes exactly right. And, that's, and a community garden. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, mm. it really does. Am I going bonkers? Am I no, going over the top? No, we all think the same thing. I mean, I just think it is, it is atrocious that we just grow grass and we mow it and grow grass and we mow it. Uh, and it should be more useful. Crazy. After all, we look after it. But it's the fact that we are mm. surrounded by these landscapes mm. and this environment. And it's like if, if we didn't actually have um, what you paint in the real world, we, all we would have is we'd go to a library and, and look at a book and say, oh, that's what life used to be like. And But it's, right. we live in this barren so, desert. So you're robots. saying they need more of my paintings, Phil? Oh, definitely. Yes, please. Yes, definitely. Roll up, roll up. <laughs> But, but it is, it's, it's getting yes, that everyone yes. to experience. And as you say, even, even science and technology is an art form in itself. It is. People don't, don't see it. Yes. They just think it as, as being some sort of hard mathematical thing. But it actually is an art form. It's a traditional yeah. viewpoint, I yeah. think. Yeah. We, everyone can change mm. a little bit. And yeah. um, the young kids need, the kids of today, yeah. they yeah. need encouragement. Mm. And, and the thing is, too, it's like you were saying, like, you, you know, you're taking classes for art. And I think, yeah, it's... it's we um, there are classes out there for for children to learn art and things. Yes. I think that's an essential part because they're they're appreciating the beauty around them, and um, that's what you're doing with your classes is just showing people, hey, that may just be a bowl of fruit, but actually have a look at it. It actually is is each piece is beautiful in itself, and and it's got colour and it's yes. got texture, and it's got other things. It's just not something to eat and to right. peel and eat and so forth. Right. It's actually got something, and it's and. We need to keep surrounding ourselves with these things, right? And that that's, that brings uh, that reminds me of a point that I've been challenged, um, usually gently by other artists. Say, oh, Jenny, but you know, real artists—they're free and loose. And I said, um, I didn't really know what to re- how to reply because I hadn't <laughs> thought about. Well, I hadn't thought about why shouldn't I paint carefully? Sometimes I do just. Mm. Flicks. And especially when I'm um, when I've got some watercolour, it's particularly fun. It might be a little, as you say, a little vignette mm. of a path leading down, and there might be something, a beautiful old rusty ornament in the in the foreground, and maybe a rose hanging over it, something of that sort. And then I'll feel free to sort of load a paintbrush with half a dozen no a toothbrush, an old toothbrush with half a dozen colours, and go flick, 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 mm. flick carefully over it and just create that looseness, that automatic uh, unexpectedness. Unexpectedness, that's yes. right. Yes. Cool. <laughs> and then another thing's um, who are we to say you're not a real artist because you don't if I could have responded, you're not a real artist <clears> because <throat> you don't draw your lines carefully. No, it's a freedom of doing yeah. whatever. I and, can be free with my and, work. And at that's times. that's part of the um, not the challenge. No, the challenge. I'm, I'm getting your problem now. It's not the challenge. It, <laughs> Sorry. That, that's part of the understanding that art isn't one thing. No. You know. No. Otherwise, it's perception. It is. Yeah. Release. Everyone, it's, exactly right. Yes. And one of, but the thing for me personally, out of my workshops, when people that I'm noticing that people going <clears> out uh, away with their their work, it's showing them that they can. They actually have an artistic bone mm. in their body because everyone says, I can only draw a stick figure. Well, yes, we can all draw stick figures, but you can do more than that too if you desire to. It's just that desire. Exactly. If you don't have that desire, it doesn't matter. No. It's everyone just, to their own. And that's right. And it's, it's just enjoying it. Yes. Um, probably that's about right. time. So thank you, Jenny. Um, artist and life extraordinaire. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Phil. Yes. I'm sure you. I'm sure you've enhanced the reality <laughs> of my life, but uh, I do love it. And thank you, thank you for um, inviting to have a chat me yes. into have a chat with you today. Mm. Um, I didn't expect quite a lengthy chat, and we probably only passed through part of the chapter oh, exactly. of my life. Yes, but yes. well, the thing is, it's, it's, it's like a chapter. painting. There's all sorts of little vignettes within your life, which are just like a painting. Oh, Phil. Very artistic. Very cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dive Art. Thank you, Dive Art.